Everything said and presented here is purely for educational purposes. So, I was browsing Tails installation tutorials, as you usually do on a Saturday evening, and I found them lacking, with some weird statements sprinkled here and there. For example, you can use Tails on a computer you do not trust. If you really don't trust it, how do you know there isn't a hardware keylogger installed? That way, sure, your network connectivity is secure, but anything you type on that machine can be easily compromised. Tails doesn't leave any traces on the computer it runs on. Well, like any other live ISO, this is not false, but this is sold as a unique Tails property, which is, well, pretty generic. BitTorrent is the best way to download Tails anonymously. You are literally screaming to every peer, send me Tails, I'm downloading Tails version 17. By the way, this is how Hollywood knows you are pirating their movies. They just quietly listen on torrent peers and have a full set of time, date and IPs, which then they send to ISPs with takedown notices. I think this goes without saying, but just installing Tails and using Tor network won't make you anonymous unless you know what you are doing and understand it. Anyway, I got carried away a little. Just remember that Tails is not magic. It's just a live ISO with certain things pre-installed and pre-configured. Get yourself an untrash great USB pen drive. If you actually want to use Tails and have a good time, get something that has a decent read and write speeds. Download the ISO. If you want to quickly verify your download, just use the JavaScript functionality on the website or manually calculate the SHA-256 of the downloaded file and compare it against the latest .json. This is basically the same thing. If you are on Windows, use Rufus to write your Tails image to the pen drive. On Linux, simple DD will do. If you're using custom secure boot signing keys, and you are, if you followed my secure Arch tutorial, you can sign the boot x64.efi. That way, you do not have to disable your secure boot whenever you want to use Tails. So now you have Tails started. You can set up the encrypted storage, connect to Wi-Fi, and then to the Tor network itself. Well, blah blah blah, click here to connect, etc, etc. You have eyes, don't you? One important thing to note is that you need to disable the JavaScript in the Tor browser. And as to why, we'll cover that in a minute. The common assumption is that if something requires JS on Tor, then it is most likely a trap. It's actually weird that this is not a default option. I am going to abbreviate a little, but if you want an actual amazing explanation, I am going to link computer files material on Tor in the video description. Tor stands for the Onion Router, hence the Onion in the logo. It uses a series of Onion Routers to pass on the connection from client to server. The clever thing is, it uses multiple keys to encrypt a packet, so that every relay can peel off exactly one layer of encryption. For example, the packet from the client comes out encapsulated with three layers of encryption with three different keys. The first relay peels back the first layer and knows to send it to the relay number 2. The relay number 2 does the same and forwards the packet to the relay number 3. The last relay, called also an exit node, decrypts the last layer and sees that the actual packet is meant for, let's say, duckduckgo.com. The only thing the exit node knows is that the packet encapsulated with the last encryption layer came from the previous relay number 2, nothing else. On the way back, the response is encrypted with a relay free key and sent to the relay number 2 which does the same and so on. In the end, you receive a response fully encrypted with three sets of keys that only you can decrypt. While it sounds amazing, most of the people using Tor were busted not by cracking the encryption, but with metadata, such as We know you connected to Tor every day at 11am, and 5 minutes later we've been receiving those threatening emails. You need to remember that even with Tor, there are still things that need to be considered, like Without HTTPS, your traffic is still unencrypted from the exit node to the target server, or 
photos and videos taken with your phone may contain GPS coordinates or detailed phone model data. Behavioral detection can be used to verify that you are, in fact, you. This is currently the next big thing in IT security. It is also used to distinguish bots from humans. There are many parameters involved, but for example, the speed at which you are typing, combined with the way you are moving your mouse, can be used to uniquely identify you. Since this data acquisition happens via JavaScript, you should disable it just in case. It means that security, anonymity, and whatever else you want is not a distro you can just boot up and be done with it.